Hey guys, Old Guy Gaming here, back again with another MTG Arena video, and tonight we're going to be doing a Fun Deck Friday with historic mono black zombies. So, with Pioneer soon on the horizon in the next couple of years in Arena, we know that that's coming, uh, MTG has decided to add a couple of cards from the history of Magic into the game, and one of the cards that really got me excited uh, was Crypt Breaker, because way back in the day, man, zombies was the way to go in Standard. It was one of the most powerful decks and this card was one of the ones that helped build it. So, and Zombies is easily one of my favorite um, archetypes in the game. I mean, if it were me and we were just playing on the kitchen table, I would be playing a zombie deck. <laughs> that It's mono black and it has zombies. It's kind of my thing in Magic. So this deck I play all the time ever since this card has come out. I uh, haven't had a chance to feature it on the channel yet, so I figured now, if nothing else, would be a great time to do so. So let's go ahead and take a look at the deck. I've gotten in a lot of hours with this deck. So let's get into the first card off the top. This is the reason why we're building the deck. Quitbreaker is a one, uh, one casting cost 1-1 one, one, uh, zombie, of course. Uh, for two mana, you can tap and discard, and you can create a 2-2 two, two black zombie token. That's fun. It gives you some kind of creature uh, generation. It's kind of okay. It does involve discarding a card, but if it's a land that you don't need or a card that's not going to be very useful, you can go ahead and pitch it. The main reason why Quitbreaker is so strong is his second ability, which is tap three untapped zombies you control, draw a card, and lose a life. This basically means that you get virtually infinite uh, card draw as long as you have enough life to pull it and that is where the strength of it comes in sure you need two other zombies because he can use himself for that for that reason but card draw is, is it's one of the main staples of how you win magic games so having four of these is a must so absolutely going with that so if you're going to build a zombie deck, you need to build zombies around it. So let's go ahead with some of the best of the best that have come out. Uh, Diagraph Ghoul, two, man, two casting cost, two, two, comes into play tap, but still, A, one of the best artworks. I love the artwork on Diagraph Ghoul, but it is a really good, strong powerhouse for a one drop. Uh, you can kind of go either way with where you want to go with your removal. I have some of my favorites for my re removal suites. I really, really wish that Fatal Push was in. If Fatal Push was in Arena, I know the card's in Arena because I was in beta. I know that it's there. Um, so to to kind of fill that gap until Fatal Push comes back around, Disfigure is going to have to fill that role. Uh, it's an instant uh, minus two, minus two. It takes out a lot of early game creatures, or it's a great combat trick to be able to kill another creature uh, you're attacking that, ooh, we think you got you blocked, and then you drop them down by two toughness, and then they're dead. Falmir Knight. Really like this one. There's two things you can pull this one off of. Um, it does have, obviously, an adventure, which is Profane Insight. Uh, allows you to draw a card and lose a life. That should sound familiar. Uh, and then, of course, it leaves behind a 1-1 death-touching zombie Knight as well. Cast down. Oh boy, if I miss this card. Uh, destroy target creature. It's not legendary. There aren't a ton of legendaries. They are out there, and we do have an answer for that later down the line. But for most of your run of the mill common non legendary creatures, great. Instant speed removal. Fantastic card. Graveyard Marshal, um, you will lose cards. Uh, we don't do a lot of graveyard play where like, we're removing stuff, bringing stuff back. I did debate putting like Witch's Cottages or stuff like that in there, but kind of went against it. Um, I just went with Cathal Lothwains instead. So since you're not going to really be playing with your graveyard, exiling a creature card from your graveyard to create a 2 2 uh, zombie doesn't hurt you. It does cost three, but at least it gets a body on the board. So that's why there's only two of them in there. Last stop, Reaver. You're not only creating one zombie, you're creating two uh, with this one. Love this card from uh, War of the Spark. One of my favorites, actually. And then, of course, I get Death Baron back. Oh, I get Death Baron back. Oh, whenever if we can get back to, um, and again, I know it's in Arena because I played it in Beta. If I can go back and getting the uh, the other Lord in uh, from Amon Ket, and boy, is his name's escaping me right now, um, running eight uh, Anthem effects in the deck. This one actually gives you the added bonuses of Skeletons, which you don't have, and other zombies you control get plus one, plus one, and have Death Touch. Boy, does that change a board state when every creature on the board, even your little one ones, have Death Touch. That really changes things. Again, you are going to be losing creatures. You're aware of that. So Midnight Reaper is an additional card draw. It does basically the same thing. So this whole deck is really built around card draw, filtering through your decks, getting the stuff that you need. Um, the top end removal that we were talking about before, you can go Vraska's Contempt if you want this. I prefer Murderous Rider. Yes, it does do two life and Vraska's Contempt gains you two life. But it, this also gives you the option of putting out another zombie that has lifelink. So there are benefits to that. Uh, your top end finisher, of course, is going to be Liliana. You can, I, I swayed back and forth between which Lily to run with this on 
on this one. I went with Dreadhorde General, um, mostly because I love her. Each player removes two creatures, because if you have two, like, zombie tokens that you're just not doing over this, you can really change a board state when on, the, on the opposite side of the field. Um, she also creates tokens for, creates zombies easily, and then her top-end finisher is really pretty good. So you can't really argue with that one. Um, mana base, relatively simple. Four caps with Lothwains and 16 Swamps. So let's go ahead and play some games. Again, fair reminder, this is historic, so there may be a little bit of a wait, but if you're going to play uh, in historic and you have a historic deck, you want to go into the play section, you will be matched with a historic player. So if you like the content and if you like the fact that I'm delving into historic, because oh boy, am I having a ton of fun of it. Um, I have so many decks I want to now revisit now that historic is kind of a thing. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you have a historic deck that you'd like to see, I've uh, gotten suggestions for, obviously we talked about uh, doing um, Merfolk, I've seen Drake's I'd like to do again. There's so many other cool stuff that's just kind of like rotated out of standard. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy. And you know, hit the like and subscribe button while you're there. Super helpful. If I hit a thousand, I'm like my lifelong goal for this entire channel is to hit a thousand subscribers just to say I was able to do it. So I would appreciate it. Rito Reto. I'm gonna call him Reto. Rito. Rito sounds more correct. Hmm, so a ton of removal and no zombies. And my opponent goes first. This could be annoying. I could go with that. Sure, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens when we get a bad hand. <laughs> And this looks like it's going to be Mono White Lifelink. If you like that video, go back and look at Wednesdays, because I think I built a deck exactly like this. Oh, a Johnny's Pride Mate. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Look at that, Mr. Pride Mate. That's the one thing, I, like, everyone's always like, oh, sometimes you put too much removal in your deck. No, 10 pieces of removal is not too much. Not too much at all. Holy crap, this guy has everything going for him. He's going to hate me because <laughs> every piece of removal I drew. Wait, he's got something else, right? He's got another creature. Like, he's like, oh, Gideon, cool. <laughs> Let's remove Gideon, too. Sure. Goodbye, Gideon. <laughs> oh, my God. This guy has to be so irritated right now. He's got a whole bunch of cards in his hand. It's like, oh, okay, you've got cool. Oh, there's your Johnny's. There you go. All right, so I don't have enough removal for that. So that is going to be a problem. Um, so where do we want to go from here? Let's go here. When we don't have... When we do not have... The removal that we need, we go fishing for it. So here's the cool thing you can do. Tap creatures, you can block the creature and then tap it with Cryptic Irresistibility. So for example, as he's going to come in here and really kind of like push heavy. So one thing I don't like about a Johnny's Pride Mate, as much as I love this card, um, it doesn't have trample. So it can get as big as it wants to. It's just not going to, it's just going to keep slamming up against one ones most of the time. Sure. Sure. Yeah. See, I know this deck really well. This looks exactly like my deck. Oh, you're going to give it lifelink? No, oh, no, you can't. This is just an additional token. Sure. So we're going to do this. We're... No, we're just going to do that for now. We are going to use his ability. We are going to tap one, two, three, so we can draw a card. Hopefully get another piece of removal. That's not what we got. But maybe, just maybe, we can get to that piece of removal. Hmm. Could keep the eternal blocking of a Johnny's Pride Mate train going. I do like that a lot. We're gonna hold. We've got a hold. We've got enough that we can sit down and block Heliod in the Johnny's Pride Mate for a, a little bit at least. One piece of removal really does help us out. Two would be even better, because we'd be able to take uh, Heliod back off the board. Sure. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, this is a good deck. I literally just played this deck, so I'd have no qualms with this at all if I lose to this deck. Um, sure. I'd prefer not to take that much damage. He's going to give lifelink to something. 
He does realize that lifelink only works if he actually does damage, right? Sure. Let's tap one and two and three. Oh, he's still gonna get the lifelink. All right, so we are in desperate need of removal, or we are in some serious trouble. And again, I can't really complain because I quite literally just played the same deck. Um, sure, let's do it again. I mean, at this point, we are in some dire straits if we do not get some sort of removal. Can we do it? Oh, we can't. So we are going to say, good game, good sir. Because there is nothing we can do. I mean, sure, it would have been nice, maybe, if we could have gotten um, Liliana down. That would have been nice, because he'd have been forced to sacrifice probably the Vanguard. Maybe the Pride Mate. Um, but no, it is what it is. I don't see us winning this game anytime soon. It's just going to cost us more life. So we are going to tap out on that one. Good deck. I can't complain. It's <laughs> literally the deck I played on Wednesday. For you, anyway. So, all right, let's go get another one. Again, I feel disappointed. Um, we got a new set of speakers set up here in the recording studio. So I spent the last 30 minutes kind of playing with the audio settings to make sure that everything still sounded fine on the video. Let me know if I screwed that up because I did some tests and it sounded good. Um, but all of my test games with this deck all did really, really well. I won every single game. And of course, as always, the second I start hitting the record button, for the the channel and that, that that's when i start getting my losses here comes the here comes lemon all right lemon let's see what you got Ooh, boros i've got a distinct feeling that this isn't just boros but we shall see we will say hello like a gentleman Don't have enough zombies to tap, so I might as well do it. So he's got something coming. Steamkin! Why, hello, Mr. Steamkin, how are you? Um. Yeah, let's just go in and do some damage. I want to hold on to that knight for a little bit. This does look like it's just straight up Boros. Cool! I think he may have seen them writing on the wall here. We had enough removal there, like whatever he would have put down there. Like Boros tends to be aggro, and I had a sneaking suspicion that that was a feather deck, which would have been fine. Um, don't really see Steamkins running feather decks though, so I would have been really curious to see where he was going with that. Would have been interesting. That's the one thing that I'm finding that for those who are not playing Historic, um, and there's again, there's nothing wrong. If you're cool with playing in Standard, great. Please do enjoy it. One of the things I'm finding really fascinating about Historic is I'm seeing a ton of decks I've not seen in a really long time. And it's just a ton of fun. I mean, it's just really been a ton of fun. To like, oh, I remember what it was like to play that deck. So there is um, something to be said for Historic play, just for the ability to play with some of the old cards that are sitting in your library. Why, hello, General Garrison. All right, so <laughs> I'm curious if I know. Oh, look at this. A life linking deck. We seems, me seems to get these all the time nowadays. This looks like it might be um, old school white weenie. Let's see where this goes. <clears throat> Let's see where this goes. The next card on this one's, if it's not a pride mate, this could be, okay, this could be Black White Vampires. This is another deck I want to go back to and play. Legion Lieutenant, fantastic card. You don't want to do that. Okay, because I don't care about that. I'm more than happy to kill your creature. I 
As I stated in the past, good sir, you do not want to do that. Yeah, Black White Vampires with Legion Lieutenants. Oh, such a good deck. I totally miss that. Hmm. Probably get Graveyard Marshal and the Crypt Breaker down now. Ooh, he's wasting life to get something out. This must be good. Soren, probably. Cast out. Cast out. Interesting. Sure. Yep, I know, I'm burning myself to do it, but it's just so much fun. The upside with this much removal this early... There's Soren. I knew Soren was coming, so he's probably going to pitch out a big vampire. Yep, oh, yes. Yes, Death Baron, thank you very much. Come on in. Come on in, the water's fine. Oh, Vicious Conquistador, I love that card. The blood is the last. Oh, boo. And you never got to get your combo off with him. And let's take Soren and punch him in the face. No, oh, you watch your temper, Soren. Knight of the Abon Legion. Man. This is, this is getting good. Sure. Oh my god, two lilies. Alright, so now we need to get some zombies out on the board. Start drawing some cards, because we're missing some lands. And a little bit of removal would not hurt. I can't imagine he's going to swing with the Knight of the Evil Legion. Ah, there it is, the Adanto Vanguard. We've been missing you, my friend. Probably going to put that counter on the Vanguard. Yep, that's what you do with those things. So, we're going to draw. Hmm, not what we needed. Hmm, 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 hmm. Where to go, where to go. I do like the idea of gaining some of the life back that I'm losing. Uh, the Adonto Vineguard, for example, is going to have a little bit of problems. Because while it does get the bonus for the plus two, and he can pay for life to make it indestructible, that paying for life t starts to hurt a little bit. It really does. Oh, Legion Landing. He's got his three vampires now. Yeah, and if, in case you do not know the card Legion's Landing, it does flip, into, uh, flip over to the Odontos, the first fort, which allows him to create more vampires. Yeah, this is a, oh, and he's sacrificing vampires. Okay. He actually helps me by putting that back into my library, considering how much more I can filter through my deck now. Interesting. Hmm. So he is going to hold. Are you? Okay. And I will draw a card. Hopefully something useful. Ooh, Disfigure. Disfigure is perfect for... Adanto's Vanguard, because even though he's indestructible, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. That's how you get rid of Adanto's Vanguard, by the way. He can pay the, pay the life. It's not going to help, because the rules of the game state that if you go down to zero toughness, you are dead. And he doesn't know the rules of the game. Cool. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Um, let's go with the general. Let's see what happens here. So, 
I would love to get Soren off the board, so let's go ahead and do that. I still need... Sorry. I have a daughter who is currently at a Broadway show at the moment. Well, not Broadway. It's our local theater. And uh, my sister-in-law is texting me and wanting to know if she can eat on the way home. And I have to let her know, yes, of course she can eat on the way home. There we go. Champion of Dust. Now, normally that's the card that Soren kind of dumps down on his own. Um, Which one do you want to dump? Probably the Graveyard Marshal. Because he's going to swing in. I imagine he's going to swing in. Sure. Neat. Now the cool part is going to be is if we get another mana, which we do not. Let's go ahead and kill that though. Would would have been nice if we got another mana because then we could have just really cleaned house here. So let's ensure that Soren goes away. Because he's really building off the strength of Soren right now. And we get to draw another card. Which is that land we wanted. Cool. <laughs> he's got another Soren. Of course he does. Of course he does. Yep, yep. Totally understand. It was between that and the Dust Legion Zealot. I had to... I had to... I'm really regretting not killing that instead. I'm... Sure? Um... Let's exile that. Again, I can't imagine he's going to swing. There's the land we needed. Excellent. We'll sacrifice that in one of the Crypt Breakers. Draw cards, draw cards, perfect. Now we're cooking. Starting to get our lifelink back on. Danto's Vanguard actually doesn't concern us. Because we're going to be creating a creature every turn that's going to allow us to block that thing. And I've got a Murderous Rider in there. He can pay the four life to make it indestructible, of course, if he so chooses. Let's actually go ahead and kill Soren. Okay. That's not who I was targeting. That's his second oops. <laughs> yeah, I think... I'm sorry to say, I don't think he realized how that deck worked. And there's a couple of spots in the game where he wasn't quite certain of the, um, the rules of the game. Like the, the Disfigure, and he didn't see that I was targeting Soren. So, let's go ahead and give one more game. Um, mostly because I love playing this deck and I could play it all night long. I, I could play for hours. If you guys want to see me do a live stream for two hours playing this deck, I absolutely will. Um, let me know in the comments down below, because that'll happen. Um, but no, that... It makes me think that, first of all, that's a really cheap deck to build for if you're... Because there's a mo the vast majority of that deck, the Black-White uh, Vampires deck, is made up of commons and uncommons, which is probably a good idea. I'm going to write that down. That's probably a good idea for budget historic decks, because you've got a ton of common and uncommon cards. You can base build that deck really cheaply. Okay, there's, again, I am obnoxious with my amount of removal. It's worked so far. Let's go with that.
I do have creatures in this deck. I've seen them. You've seen them. We know they're... And are we getting mono white life gain again? Dauntless Bodyguard. This looks like it might be a uh, white weenie. Sure. It's a little frustrating because I've got a lot of good one and two drops that for whatever reason decided not to show up to the party the last two games. We had a good result last time. I'm not going to argue. I think my opponent has severe <laughs> misplays on that team, though. Sure. <sighs> All right, so this is the... Yeah, Knight of Malice. Protection from white. Well, that is a great card that I don't want to see any more of. Which also means he's got the protection from Black Knight. That's going to be a problem. This is Black White Knight. This is another great deck. So many good ideas um, for budget historic decks. And Gideon's still in standard right now. So, like, you can toss Gideon into this deck. Uh, I think he had Gideon's and thought it would go away. There's better cards to put in for that. Don't get me wrong. Gideon's probably going to get him the win here. I'm not going to lie. Um, he is legendary, is he not? All right, Gideon. I feel like I've done this to you twice today. At some point in time, I will get to put creatures down. It can happen. <laughs> Again, I must be frustrating my opponents. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of ones I'm going to think of. So that's probably going to be like my next series um, are going to be, I mean, I'll still stick to standard. If those of you that stick around, stick around like I'm not going to abandon standard. There's still quite a few standard decks I need to go through um, and get done. But I think I might shift um, Fun Deck Fridays into Historic Fridays for a little bit so that I can go over some of these budget historic decks to kind of introduce people to the play. So you've got a ton of those common and uncommon cards floating around. And that's the one that I was worried about right there. Because it's protection from black. Like, I can sit there and block it all day long. It's not going to change a thing. Okie dokie. So that actually is going to work out to our favor. Because this is going to give us a blocker for his... I mean, I'm not going to do it, get any life gain off of it. What's he looking at? But it is going to give me a permanent blocker so that at least I'm not getting my butt kicked by the protection from black creature. And then you, Mr. Bodyguard, you have caused me enough grief. Thank you very much. The reason why I'm not going to get any life gain, in case you do not know, is that... Oh, look at that. I have black. That's right. He gets a 3-2. That's not going to work. Never mind. Uh, because he has protection from black, he does... I do no damage to him. I don't gain any life from him. Valiant Knight. See, this is how you build a knight's deck. Um, no, sir. I don't like it. Even the death touch doesn't help me. I do get to toss on at least a blocker, but that'll be nice. And I can start doing some life gain. Yeah, again, so death touch and lifelink, uh, you need to do damage for those effects to kick into place. He's got first strike and protection from black. So even if I happen to do damage to him, quote unquote, sure. Um... He's got protection from black, which means he has no damage whatsoever. So I'm never going to get off those those combos. So what I need now is a Liliana, because Liliana does not target him, and that'll wipe him out. And I need the lands to cast him. So we are in a bit of trouble here. No, no, no doubt about that. Hehehe. <laughs> Um, sure. Let's do this first. I'm going to eat that, though. I'm going to eat three, so I'm just going to be um, evening the score here, because he's just going to get that three back, plus that. But I'll kill that next turn. Hmm. See, this is what I mean. Historically, there's been so many good, challenging games. This is the kind of magic that I like. Yep. Sure. Totally understand. 
Yep, no, that's all you. You got it. Temple of Silence. Yeah, man, this guy's... It's a good deck. So now we're going to be in this interesting little stalemate. It's not really a stalemate, because... I can't block him. I can do 5 damage and do 3 life. He can do 3 damage to me each turn. I'm going to gain back that 3. Now, the upside, of course, is I'm going to go ahead and get another Murderous Rider down, and I'll really start getting more life back. See, I don't know if I'd be swinging with him if I were him. Which one's more fruitful? This one is far more fruitful. See, it takes me back to 7. Except next turn, I'm going to be going up by 6, and he's really starting to lose the battle here. History of Benalia. Great card. Haven't seen that in a long time. A great card to put into a black deck. So, let's go with... Hmm. So, the first trick actually doesn't bother me because he's not going to have enough to kill me. He could block with both on the same creature. Sure. Um, no, don't bother. It's got protection from black. Let's kill that first. Wait a tick. He had protection from black. How did he how did that work? That shouldn't have worked like that. That Knight of Grey should still be around. So I'm going to take out your first striking knight. Sorry, good sir. Don't want to start doing damage to myself just yet, so I'm not going to cast the Midnight Reapers. Not yet. <laughs> there we go. Whew. All right. Those were some great games and a lot of fun. Um, so I do hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like, subscribe. Always let me know. Uh, any decks you're interested in, see, let me see play, especially in the Historic. I'm having a ton of fun in this playground. So until next video, guys, we shall see you in the arena. This video was brought to you in no small part by our patrons. If you would like to help out the channel, go to www.patreon.com slash oldguygamingmtga. And thank you for your support.